my friend today is this $80 smartphone. Less than $100, 8,000 rupees, you could get this off the shelf. This is beginning to change Pakistan. Pakistan is the ninth largest market for cell phones in the world. We have 137 million cell phone users in this country. And this little guy here has enabled us to essentially transform the government here in Punjab. The story started in 2011. We had 21,000 confirmed patients of dengue in Punjab, out of which 17,000 were from Lahore alone. 352 people had already died. And at the time, the government certainly wasn't prepared to deal with the pandemic of that scale. And, and, and what the painful lesson that we learned at the time was that you're best served to prevent an epidemic like that and you can't control it once it has happened. Dengue also does not have a cure. Most government officials uh, were presenting their work to the chief minister as pictures of the work that their department had done the day before. And in one of those pictures, the chief minister noticed that there isn't a timestamp. So he became quite irate. He, he looked at that guy and said, you could be fooling me, this could be a picture from before, and you're trying to recycle that picture and convince me that this work was indeed done yesterday. So I came back, uh, not knowing what to do. We spent night writing a small application for, uh, for this phone, and this was literally, you know, this was sort of a, we pulled a nighter, this was a, this 12 hours of work, these phones have also made it easier to write applications. And we somehow begged, borrowed, stole about 15 smartphones. And convinced these departments uh, to use smartphones and to use our application on the smartphone to take pictures. So the plan was that this application would geotag the picture because this has a GPS built in, so would geotag the picture and would timestamp the picture and we'll only recognize that the work was done once these pictures were submitted to our system. So you can't force the location of the work, you can't force the time of the work and you have to log into the application so we find out who had indeed done this work and verifiably so. So off we go, we gave these 15 phones, it's largely the Syria District Government and the Health Department and asked them to start taking pictures using our smartphone dengue application. Each one of these mosquito signs that you see there is a picture submitted by the field workers. We can click on any one of these pictures and you'll see what it looks like. It looks like the before and after picture, there's someone shedding the tires, tires are a favorite uh, hiding place for mosquitoes uh, and, and this is where the dengue mosquitoes typically develop from a larva to a mosquito and then spread that disease so someone's getting rid of these open tires uh, in workshops and roads etc this was done by the district coordination office uh, in Kasur, uh, the name uh, of the guy who is doing it uh, is, is login ID, uh, uh, the activity that he's doing and the entry time and date. This is what happened a year from that time. Uh, there wasn't an inch of this city that wasn't covered with prevention activities. And as, as all of you now know, Punjab has not had another epidemic since 2011, even though all the epidemiology experts told us that you should prepare for another dengue epidemic. And we contained this dengue epidemic by no accident. It happened because all this great work was done by government officials. Over the last three years, we have had close to 5.4 million pictures submitted using smartphone applications. And that is what has led us to contain, prevent the dengue epidemic from happening again. This was intervention number one. This was very simple, simple application that would let you take pictures of the prevention work that you were doing. But then we built on this work. We got a little more scientific and asked these guys to also geotag the presence of the dengue larva. This is the Aedes aegypti larva. It's a slightly different kind of mosquito that carries the dengue infection. So whenever they were doing their prevention activities, uh, removing debris or, or removing a puddle of water or cleaning up and so on and so forth or doing some fog sprays, uh, we asked them that if you ever come across the Aedes aegypti larva, please geotag it. So we know where some things will develop into an outbreak. The red pins that you see here are positive dengue larva reports. Finally, in, as part of the dengue protocol, when a patient shows up in a hospital, someone goes to their house to do what is called an IRS spray. So as part of that protocol, we embedded a smartphone also and asked them to geotag the house of the confirmed patient. 
So what we started getting was this map. The red pins are the positive lava reports and the circles here are the one kilometer radius around the house of a confirmed patient. The one kilometer radius is significant because that's the typical flight radius of a dengue mosquito. You will notice two things in this picture. Wherever you see more red pins, you also see patients. Wherever you see one patient, you'll see a cluster of patients around them. That's because it's a vector-borne, outbreak-oriented disease. If you get one mosquito in a neighborhood, it's going to infect more than one people. If you can detect the larva early on, you can predict that there will be patients coming through shortly. This is real data from Lahore. So, armed with this, with, the, with, with positive larva reports coming through, as well as patient reports coming through, and, and then we put in more environment parameters in this, things like temperature, rainfall, humidity. So we start building a system that was taking all these data streams in, prevention and containment activities, presence of larva, patients, their frequency and place, as well as environment parameters. And if these were in a conducive band, and epidemiology folks would understand this, you could predict if something's going to develop into an outbreak. So the idea is, and we go back to that screen, so the idea is that if you could, if you, if you could detect the larva or you could detect a, a presence of one or two patients and concentrate your prevention activities in that area, you can contain dengue epidemic from spreading. And essentially that's what has happened. You can localize the outbreak and prevent it from becoming an epidemic. And that's what we've been doing in Punjab for the last three odd years uh, with this 5.4 million different prevention activities that have been geotagged. And based on this, we've now designed an early epidemic warning system that gives you a heads up weeks in advance if something's going to develop into an epidemic. So we developed this tool with all this data coming in. Pictures have come in already from smartphones. So we start this slideshow just like this. You see pictures where the work was done. You see the place in the city where the picture was taken, the organization that did this work, and so on and so forth. Works a lot like a PowerPoint slideshow, except that it, all, it works on data that's been submitted using smartphone applications. I'm going to quickly move on to a different sector altogether, which is education. 52,695 schools in this province, 10 million students study in these schools and government of Punjab employs 321,000 teachers. So the problem is to make sure that the students are showing up in classrooms, that the teachers are indeed present, that the facilities are in order, the furniture, uh, the, the, the rooms are, are reasonably furnished, there's running tap water, electricity, so on and so forth. To achieve this, we employed 1,000, actually 950, monitoring evaluation assistants. Uh, these are people who have motorbikes and go from school to school and do spot visits to report data from classrooms. In terms of whether uh, students are showing up, what the student enrollment looked like, whether the, the teacher was present, the, the, the facilities were ready, etc., etc. And, and, and for these guys, they were initially, when we recruited them, started reporting this data on, on paper, but very quickly realized that there's lots of opportunity for you to fudge data uh, because you know, no one wants to look bad reporting data uh, in the system. So you, if you collect data uh, on, on, a, on a pen and paper in a, in a long, tedious form, and then it gets summarized by various people in the government, it doesn't quite truly really reflect what you want to capture. So we replaced this paper with these tablets. This is a 13,000 rupee 130 dollar tablet runs our application it just gives you a little more real estate on the screen and and and, and runs a simple application that essentially digitizes the form that you wanted to collect but once again this device has a gps built in and has a camera which we can put to good use uh, we rolled this out about a year ago we have over a million different forms we have come through since by these spot wizards using these tablets and this is what that data looks like uh, this is what the map Punjab looks like. These are all the parameters that we're monitoring, teacher presence, student attendance, school facilities, cleanliness of the schools, etc., etc. And, and this map is colored. The lightly colored districts here are not doing as well as the ones that are colored in a darker shade. So let's take one of those districts. This is uh, Rajanpur. So let's click on Rajanpur. As we click on Rajanpur, we'll see all the tehsils within Rajanpur. And we look at the tehsil that has the 
lowest score in terms of student attendance rojhan as we click on rojhan these are all the schools in rojhan their unique id the name of the school whether the visit has happened or not and what the student presence looked like when the spot check happened and as we go down this list you would see there are certainly schools that have 100 percent attendance the school that's the, that have 70 percent attendance but there are also schools that did not have a student present when the spot visit happened and their data is also accurately captured using these devices. And, and there are schools that have 0% attendance. No one was there when the inspector went there to find out if the school is doing what it's supposed to do. So we, let's say, click on one of the schools that had 15% on average students available. That's Mubarak, School Mubarak. So we click on that. And this is the form that got filled on this tablet. You see the name of the district, the name of the guy who did it. We typically hide that. Uh, this is the public view. I'm going to come, that, to come back to that in a second. The cell phone of the guy who put in this data, the cell phone of the MEA, we typically hide that also. As we go down, we capture all these details uh, about the school, about various parameters that I just explained. But also, there's evidence that the visit actually happened. The picture of the attendance register, they take a picture of the attendance register which gets geotagged as evidence that the MEA actually went there. Picture of the head teacher, picture of the MEA, the selfie of the MEA in front of the school as evidence that the MEA actually went there. This is also geotagged, it won't be able to go through unless you happen to be at the school and the visit proof. Uh, which is his signatures on the attendance register. We've taken all this data and all the other parameters are automatically computed and have made this data public. So we've taken all this data and we put it live for everyone to see. If you go to open.punjab.gov.pk, we go back to the top side. If you go to open.punjab.gov.pk, you would essentially see this, where all this data is linked from here, which is what we just showed you. And the final thing that we're doing now is to try and involve the communities where this data that people are reporting can't be forged in the sense that the the MEA has to go to the school and send this geotagged forms and selfies into the school, etc. But he can still lie. He can still say that the school was clean, whereas it wasn't. He can still say that the teacher was present, whereas he wasn't. So the right thing to do is to involve the community, involve the parents who are sending their children to school. So we made the platform such that as a citizen, you can come in and register an alert against the school that whenever the inspector visits the school and uploads the form, send me an SMS alert or an email alerting me that some data has been reported to the government. So I can come back to this website and look at their data and challenge it if I think that the inspector is lying to the government. I'm going to conclude very quickly by telling you one final system in the next couple of minutes, which is about tracking of vaccinators. We go back to the same idea of using smartphones for tracking government workers. As you know, about 85% of the world's polio cases come from Pakistan, a very important area for this country. Also, our disease burden in our hospitals is because we can't do good vaccination at the time that it must happen. Government of Punjab employs 3,750 vaccinators and the evidence was, given the polio outbreaks, etc., that they weren't doing their job as well as they should. And this application works a lot like Foursquare or Facebook check-ins where the, the, the vaccinators are mandated to go to what are called kit stations. These are places where you haul up children and vaccinate them. And now we mark their attendance if they go and check in to all these kit stations that have been identified for them as targets that they must go to. When they go and check into all these kit stations, their attendance is marked as present. If they fail to check into any one of the kit stations that they were mandated to go to, they're marked as absent. What I just said was that the vaccinators are supposed to go to kit stations, which are basically, you know, these places in a community where they haul up all these children and vaccinate them. And what was happening earlier that one vaccinators were not going to the kit station they were supposed to go, but also we were not very good at identifying kit stations that need to go to. We were ignoring communities that were very important uh, for these vaccinators to go to. So we've taken Google satellite imagery, and each house in the Google satellite imagery looks like a certain polygon, as if you're flying on a plane, you look down, each house looks like a little square. You can detect these polygons as something that looks like a house. So you look at the satellite image and say, hey, it looks like a house. So we take these houses and put it through our algorithms, and what comes out is this layer of polygons. Each polygon is a cluster of households. And we now mandate the vaccinators to go check in 
as evidence that they went there and correlate that with these polygons. If any one of the polygons doesn't have enough number of check-ins corresponding to the, to the number of households that have been automatically detected using the analysis of the satellite imagery, that polygon goes red. The polygons that have sufficient check-ins by vaccinators are green. The ones that don't have sufficient check-ins go red. As soon as a polygon goes red, the SMS alerts and corrections and letters start going out in the government, alerting them that some communities are being ignored. The result of this is that the vaccination coverage in about six months has risen from 21% to 71%, which is almost a world record. And, and this is especially for important antigens like OPV3 and, 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 and pentavalent 4, which is incredibly important to, sp to stop the spread of disease like polio. So I'll finish here uh, with, with, with my four interventions. Uh, that I've explained using smartphones and tablets and how these, uh, these cheap smartphones are beginning to change government in Pakistan. Thank you.